Today on Gardening with Creekside, I am finally getting these aqua pots here at the nursery planted. And as a special fun twist, this design was completely created by one of you, our viewers. Stay tuned. Hello friends, welcome to Garden with Creekside. I am Jenny and here we are at the nursery. It is getting to be the end of May and I am just now getting these aqua pots planted. But it's okay, right? Life happens and we just go with the flow and we do it. Now, if you remember these aqua pots are self-watering containers from Proven Winners designed by Michael Carr. He's the artist that creates the pots. Proven Winners sells them. Jack Barnwell is the mastermind behind the whole self-watering system. We've covered these, how these pots work before. So if you have a question, make sure you check out the video that I link above um, to show you how these work. Now, this is part of the commercial line. These are huge pots. But here at the nursery, we need something big in front of this big pergola because as soon as you come down to the nursery, these are what make a statement. Now let me tell you a little bit um, how these designs came to be. It has been a crazy season already. I mean, as most of you know, we have been super, super busy. And last year, this time last year, I had exactly knew exactly what I was gonna do in the pots. This year, I had no clue. Well, through social media, I have become friends with this sweet, precious fella named Matt from Kentucky. And he and his grandmother decided to make the seven hour trip to the nursery to come shopping. It was fantastic to meet Matt in person after we had been talking on Instagram for quite a while. And we were sitting in front of these, standing in front of these aqua pots, just chit chatting. And um, he said, so what are you gonna plant in the aqua pots this year? And I was like, Matt, I have no clue what I'm gonna do. And then I was like, I was like, hey, Matt, why don't you design them for me? And he was like, oh, you mean right now? And I was like, no, take your time, but I want you to come up with a design for these aqua pots and whatever you design, then that's what I'll do. And um, so he came up with this great idea for the aqua pots. I did tell him, I said, I think the only thing that I know that I wanna do is I wanna use the coffee cups, elephant ears in it. So then he designed it around that. And I'm super excited about it. Can't wait to see it planted. So that got me thinking, this would be fun to have viewers design these pots for both the spring, summer, and the fall. So if you have got a creative mind and you think you know what would be a beautiful recipe in these aqua pots for this fall and then coming next spring, go ahead and get your thinking caps on uh, because we will have a contest to see who comes with the winning design and we'll pick the design and plant it. And then you might just get a little uh, Cersei in the mail. Do you know what a Cersei is? My grandmama Betty always used to say, um, a Cersei was kind of an unexpected gift, a little surprise. Um, so. That's a new little word for you if you don't know what a Cersei is. Now, in the spring, early, early spring, I had in here planted um, some bulbs, some alliums, tulips. They were gorgeous. At that point, I had put in brand new soil. Um, and so I'm not going to empty these pots with soil. I am just going to use the soil that is in here. Uh, of course, we use the Proven Winners potting soil because that is what we love. That's what we use in all of our containers. I'm digging in here to make sure that I don't find any more bulbs that are in here. Um, remember that the um, tulips and, and alliums for us are annuals. Because we are in North Carolina, Zone 7B, they just simply cannot, over summer, come back in the winter and be... Um, bloom well we might get foliage but we're not going to get any blooms so i treat them as annuals all right so that pot looks good i'm gonna grab my little uh dispose all there okay so here we go first in the back we are going to use the coffee cups elephant ear now if you remember from last year's end of season video 
where I showcased all the new introductions from the trial gardens and I told you how they performed and they did. Um, well, these were one of them. They were massive by the end of the season. I mean, they were huge, they were glorious. So this is gonna make quite a statement. Now, elephant ears. If you notice that you have, um, you know, old yucky foliage, it's okay, that's fine. They're gonna continue to produce foliage as the, as the season goes on. So you can just pull that off. Notice already we've got a great vigorous root system here. Um, I'm just gonna lightly kind of free those up. And then we're gonna plant this in the back in the center. So you know, <laughs> I have to get all up in here. So I want it centered in the post. So I'm gonna pull it away just a little bit um, and get it in here like such. Because this coffee cups is gonna get huge. Like it's gonna get nice and big and these aqua pots can handle it. Next, gumfrina. So these are already in one gallon containers. We're gonna kind of tuck these as such and then have one kind of right here in front. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. Now, I have found, and you know, if you have followed us for any amount of time, you know that I tend to, um, I don't wanna say underplant my containers, but I like to see them fill in. Like I, I enjoy the process of watching the whole pot fill in and get together. I'm not a, um, you know, full right away kind of girl, but I have found with aqua pots that in my case, I can overplant them than what I normally would because they have that continuous source of water and food so I can put more plants in than maybe I traditionally would. So here, it's gonna get nice and full kind of right away. Um, I tell you, Matt, he's the sweetest thing. He, um, and he is just quite the gardener in his own right. We have really a lot of fun sending messages back and forth with each other and he's like, hey Jenny, you know, I got these window boxes and this is what I'm gonna think about doing. And uh, he was so funny because he sent me pictures of last year's window box and he was like, you know, I just think it could be better. And I was like, Matt, they're gorgeous. So uh, he does a phenomenal job with his gardening. Just really fun. Has this sweet old white farmhouse that he lives in. Um, which of course the white of a house, if you have a white house, that's just like a great palette for your um, flowers. It's just a great backdrop. So he does a fantastic job. Um, anyway, so it's a lot of fun. So I'm excited to see what y'all come up with as far as designs because we each kind of have our own different flair. And I think we all tend sometimes to get stuck in our same kind of style of how we garden. So this is gonna be really fun. I hope y'all stretch me and uh, make me try something a little different every year, I hope. So the gumfrinas are gonna do great because of course this is all gonna be sun loving plants. All of these are annuals. They're gonna last one season. Um, sun loving gumfrina is a massive magnet for butterflies. Um, they love it. All right, next. We're gonna come in here with the annual of the year, which is the pink star. It just is a beautiful white um, and pink striped, beautiful. So we're gonna come in here um, and fill them in. Matt had planned on <laughs> a good number of them. I don't know that we're gonna be able to fit quite the number that he had planned. Maybe one because I was using the gallon gumfrinas. Um, so we're just gonna see how, how many I can stick in here. Now, this is the mini Vista. So it's Supertunia mini Vista pink star. Um, so the mini Vistas are still, have great vigor, not nearly as vigorous as your Vistas, um, but they will spread, they need at least five hours of direct sun in order to um, to get your flowers. If you don't have that five hours, you're gonna have beautiful green foliage, but not really a lot of um, blooms. So make sure that you 
give them that five hours. And maybe I could have brought those gumfrinas back a little bit more, but I just know how big this coffee cups is gonna get. So I was a little bit more conservative. Very quickly, this whole pot is gonna fill in and there's not gonna be any extra. So I'm only gonna fit three of the pink stars in here because we still have more plants to go. All right, so there we go. All right, next we're gonna go with some lemon coral. Lemon coral sedum. To know her is to love her. She, oh my gosh. This stuff is amazing. It is like indestructible. Um, lemon coral for us, because remember North Carolina zone 7B is actually going to be a perennial for us. Um, it overwinters beautifully here in North Carolina. It's a perennial in zones um, where does it say? 7A to 11B. Yeah, 7A to 11B. Or 7B. So it does great. So let's see. We're going to do... Let me check my... I think... Let's do this. Let's put one right here. Planting a pot backwards <laughs> can sometimes be a little challenging. You get your... Uh, perspective off and so you got to check it from all sides but again like I said even if I'm off just a little bit in about three weeks it's not going to matter because this is going to be one glorious mass of plants and flowers and bloom now in the center we're going to have um, the sweetheart sweet Caroline bewitched after midnight the After Midnight is a great, of course, that nice dark black sweet potato vine, nice serrated leaves on it. Reminds me of a, maybe like a little bit of a maple leaf to it. Um, this is going to be really kind of our spiller. Now, so we're going, we're really kind of going with that whole thriller filler spiller recipe. Again, that's a great standard way to make a pot. So of course our coffee cups is going to be our thriller, which I'm a real thriller here. Gumfrina is our filler. It fills in the pot, and then all of these are kind of be our spillers. The sweet potato vine is going to be our most vigorous spiller, and it's going to be, hopefully, we'll make sure it's in the center. We've got the sign, the little plaque of the aquapot plaque, so we're going to make sure it goes right in front of that. Michael, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to cover up your name with this sweet potato vine. So, yep, right there in the center. Here we go. Now, one thing that is really, really common here in the South, because we are so hot and so humid, one of the pesky pests that we deal with is um, slugs and snails, particularly the slugs. The only difference is a snail has a shell, a slug doesn't. Um, they are just those little slimy, soft-bodied, critters that come out at night and they feed on the foliage of your plants, your hostas, your sweet potato vine, um, a whole host of plants. If you notice you have holes in the center of your plant and they're just eating it not from the outside, no, not nibbles, but just holes in the middle of your leaf, most likely it is because of slugs. So what we're going to go ahead and do is treat this pot with an organic slug bait. Um, because even last year, even in a container, they will crawl up the container and get in your container and eat the plants. They're pesky. So, um, I use, this is an Espoma one. Um, Bonide makes another great one. Basically what it is, it's an organic solution, so it's safe to use in your vegetable garden, um, around your pets, your kids. So they're little teeny tiny pellets that the slugs, basically they think it's food, which we want them to think it's food. And they'll eat it <laughs> and um, basically it'll make their digestive system explode and erupt and 
it's kind of a nasty way, but hey, it is effective and it gets rid of them. Now, you need to use this every couple of weeks. Just reapply it on top of the soil. If you want to, you can even put it around the base of your pot so that the, before they even get to the pot, they eat it and they are gone. Now, we're also going to go ahead and use the Proven Winners Slow Release Fertilizer. This is fantastic stuff because it is just like what it says. It is slow release fertilizer. So if I miss a liquid fertilizing session, it's all right. I know that I am covered. This is released by temperature. So once the warm temperatures hit, which is gonna be like today, um, the fertilizer is released. Now there was another trick too with these, with the aquapots. You can take a couple of scoops and go ahead and pour them directly into the water reservoir again. Now this is a massive container. So I'm gonna go ahead and put three scoops in here. So then you have fertilizer water that is being soaked up. Now, again, is if you have watched me for any length of time, you know that I, my next step is gonna be able to come in here with some mulch and cover up any areas of um, the exposed soil. Now I just use the same mulch that we use in landscaping. This is a hardwood mulch. The reason that we use the mulch in our containers is because <clears throat> one, it looks good. Two, it helps retain your moisture. So even in an aqua pot, a self-watering container, we still want to conserve water. We want to keep that moisture locked in. It really does kind of insulate the roots of the plant. It's like a nice blanket. So it keeps in more of an even temperature. It doesn't heat up too fast. There we go. And you just kind of lift, lift everybody up and get in there and just tuck them in. Now I probably got ahead of myself and probably shouldn't have put the slug bait down before I put the mulch because the slugs aren't really going to go underneath the mulch. It's all right. I just got a little excited so I can reapply. So um, yeah, fertilizer can go under the mulch. Slug bait probably needs to go on top of the mulch so that those little critters can find it a little easier and get out of here faster. So what I'll do, okay, so everybody's got a nice layer of mulch. I am gonna go back in here and sprinkle just a little bit around because if you have dealt with slugs eating your plants, you know just how quickly they can destroy your plants. And again, it's not gonna kill your plants, it's just gonna make them look ugly. And you've gone to all this trouble to make it look pretty, so let's keep it that way. All right, next, what we're gonna do is get our hose and we are going to go ahead and fill up our aqua pot that way I don't have to worry about watering it for the next couple of weeks. So I will get it filled up. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and give these plants a dose of the water soluble fertilizer. Um, it is not gonna hurt them. It's gonna give them a great jump start. So I'm gonna fill up the tank and get a uh, watering can of the water soluble ready because there's been a lot of questions on how do you use water soluble fertilizer? How do you, you know, fertilize your plants? So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it right now. Jenny got a bath. Nope. Yep. Well, that didn't take much. It was already full. So there you go. All right. Watering can. Okay. All right. So what I have is just a great, <laughs> this is a watering can my mama is letting me use here at the nursery um, over in the pines. So this is a two gallon watering can. Most of your watering cans that you have standard size are gonna be two gallons. So we're using the water soluble fertilizer. This is just fantastic. Um, the petunias and the super bells really respond well to this. So inside you have two bags of the fertilizer. Normally they open up really easily. We're gonna see. 
not today. I'm going to hand it to my trusty assistant. It's always nice to have a trusty assistant, isn't it? Oh, muscles. He got it. Thank you, lovey. All right, so they provide with you a scoop. And you're going to put one scoop per gallon. So just level it off nice and easy. And she goes. Okay. There you go. Get my water and just fill it up. Water and cans full when you're putting in the water. That's why I like to put in the fertilizer first. So when I add the water, it automatically zhuzhes it up and gets it dissolved. So you're just gonna water like normal. Like if you normally would take your can and just water. It's not complicated. Don't make it harder than it is. I'm getting myself completely wet. Right? It's not gardening till you get dirty <laughs> and wet. There we go. Old water cans, they leak. It's all good. Like what in the world? Oh, there you go. Maybe this will work. A little bit better. So I've also found with the aqua pots, when you um, first plant your aqua pot, you're going to want to water it. From the top down for the first couple of sessions because you need to get the top layer of the soil wet immediately um, because it's going to take a little bit of time for these roots because they're they're baby root systems as far as considered with this aqua pot um, to get all that good moisture so for the first couple of times water from the top all right i'm not going to use the whole two gallons so that is it. Everybody's got a nice drink of water. We're getting ready to have some real heat here in North Carolina for the first time this season. So this is the perfect time to get them in, get them water, get them fertilized. They were going to start growing immediately. They're going to be um, just happy, happy plants. So what we're going to do is we're going to just move over to the second aqua pot and get it planted. So here we go.
have time for hugs. Happy <laughs> birthday. They look absolutely fantastic. They are in their new home. They have gotten lots of yummy food, lots of good water. Uh, they are going to take off and grow, bloom, and thrive like crazy all season long. Maintenance on these guys, all I'm gonna have to do is make sure that my aqua pots stay filled with water. Right now, it's only gonna be like once every two weeks because there's such a massive amount of soil in the pot. The root systems are pre still pretty small and we don't have massive temperatures right now. So they're not gonna absorb as much water as quickly as they will later on in the season. Once the big heat of the summer hits and the roots really start to get big and vigorous and just start taking off, it really will be that I fill them up once a week. A great tip is just to um, set a day do it every day that of that week so for example i didn't say that correctly so for example if you're going to do it on sunday afternoon you know that no matter what on that sundays on sunday afternoons you're going to fill up your aqua pots now a tip take your tags save your tags and put them into your pots because this will help you remember what you have planted and for here at the nursery it's already just showing people what's in the container so they don't have to ask us Thank you so much for Gardening with Creekside. We so appreciate you. If you are not subscribed to Gardening with Creekside, please hit that button. We would love to be, for you to be notified when we have new videos come out. Um, so y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends. <music>